Hi there, I'm Lolade Akimrele, Deputy Editor at Business Day, and this is the Business Day Exclusive. With me today, I have Dr. Olisa Agbakuba, a Senior Advocate of Nigeria, as well as a former President of the Nigerian Bar Association. We will be talking about topical issues on the economy from the proposed 2024 budget to the PNID case. You're welcome, sir. Thanks. Um, so we'll be asking you a few questions, you know, just to get your thoughts on some of the topical issues right now affecting right. The, the country and the economy. I think the easiest place to start from really would be the um, PNID case. You yeah. know, Nigeria is one that um, has managed to dodge the $11.5 billion lawsuit that was brought against it by PNID. Right. But I would like to ask you, sir, um, is the case truly over and done with now? And are there other cases like this PNID case that the federal government should look out for? Well, uh Happily, I'm the chair of the National Arbitration Policy Committee set up by Mr. Malami, the outgoing Attorney General, as a result of the PNID case. So, yeah, I mean, we're very lucky to come out of this because you do not overturn an arbitration award easily. This is the third time in UK history mm. that an award is overturned. And kudos to the Nigerian government, they did an excellent job, but they started badly. As the, as the problem. So I think what would now happen, I've suggested to the Attorney General, that we need to have a worldwide review of all the, there are about a thousand cases pending against Nigeria, everywhere. Oh. Shell, all sorts of things. Because the Nigerian government is not faithful to its contracts. That's the problem. So one governor gives a contract, and the next governor breaks it through arbitration. So hopefully this will be a lesson for us to take these things more seriously. The way we write our contracts, the way we overturn policy, would be my advice to the Nigerian government. Mm. I think we are indeed lucky to have you know, avoided that um, arbitration award because right. I, I was wondering, where would that money come from? $11 billion. Yeah. You know, another thing that's got me thinking, you know, asking the question, where would the money come from, is if you look at um, the proposed budget for 2024, $26 trillion, mm. which is like a fifth higher than um, the size of the budget for 2023. Mm. And I've asked myself the same question. I'm going to ask you the same question now. Where is that money going to come from? Do you Easy. Think? The problem is the government doesn't work hard. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, Mr. Tinubu started very well with those two big announcements on fuel subsidy removal mm -hmm. and the exchange control uh, uh, um, issue, which has caused a lot of hardship. But, you know, if I liken the president to a captain on a plane, it took off very well. But you know, when the captain takes off, he runs, he, he, the weather may be bad. Yeah. He's run to two big headwinds. I think he needs to push the thought throttle mm. a bit harder so that we can see the results of why he has removed you know, uh, yeah. fuel subsidy. Yeah. In economic terms, it's called a correction. So clearly, those decisions were good, but the follow-ups have been a bit slow. Mm. Where do we get 26 trillion? trillion? Yeah. Easy. We're a rich country. When I wrote to the last outgoing minister for uh, finance, I pointed out to her there's something called MOFI in the Ministry yeah. of Finance, which yeah. is the Ministry of Finance Incorporated. incorporated yeah. It holds all the assets yeah. for the federal government. Yeah. As a result of my letter, she did an inquiry and came out with a preliminary finding that Nigeria had 33 trillion. Mm. Preliminary finding. Mm. So when you say 26 trillion, you see that uh, the problem is not that we don't have money. The problem is that we do not look for it. Mm. So 26 trillion is a small number for a country of 210 million people. If I were in government, I'd be pushing a budget of about 100 trillion a year. Mm. So it's the only way we can get out of this mess. We have a big mess. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, but I used to talk with Wale Tinubu, uh, sorry, Tinubu. Wale Edu. Wale Edu before he became... Uh, Minister, and we always referred to FDR. What President Roosevelt did in the 30s with, with, with the Depression, there are parallels. Yeah. So spend your way out of recession. Absolutely. You've got to spend your way out of recession. So if you spend your way out of recession, then you have a problem with inflation. So it's got to be a balance. It's got to be a balance between fiscal and monetary policy. It's all got to go together. I don't think we have any problems at all in Nigeria. It's the need to find the right economic direction to create jobs and revenue. Mm. It's easy to do. Mm. I'm looking at about 10 sectors. I'm doing a predictive study 
on where money can come. And we have, for instance, Elon Musk. He's just for standings. He has a constellation of satellites in low geostationary orbit in Nigeria. He's not paying a dime. He's not paying a dime. No, yeah. We have a space agency. Nobody pays a dime. DSTV does not pay. All guys who use um, satellite services in Nigeria don't pay. And I reckon that would be about six uh, billion dollars. Hmm. In the maritime sector, a papa ports generates or can generate 20 billion a day. But to do so, you have to have a program to regenerate a papa. So I would spend six to eight billion fixing the papa roads, sorting it out. Ajegunle is gone. Ajegunle was originally reserved for use as a port, but it's gone now because it's not a big city. But there are all sorts of things that can be done. If you go to uh, the financial services sector, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money there. But you've got to have people who are planning and thinking through that process. And we can go on and on, you know, to see where the funds can come. So when you say 26 trillion, that's nothing. Yeah. For a country of 200 million, million. people, that's yeah. nothing. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's less than 10% of GDP. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, countries, com countries like South Africa spend much, much more than that. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I do agree with you that there's so much more we can do in terms mm. of um, raising revenue, you know, especially when you consider that um, debt service as a percentage of revenue is really choking the government and it, you, a lot of people will tell you that the, the, debt, uh, the debt burden is not that huge. What mm -hmm. The problem is the low revenues. That's, that's the why problem. we have that's what, the we, what we have today. Another area where we are certainly punching below our weight is if you look at the crisis we have in the FX market. You know, there's acute dollar shortages right now. Um, and I'm glad you touched on the bold reform by the new administration mm -hmm. in June to mm -hmm. float the, the Naira initially, anyway. Um, but that has not gone as planned because of the dollar liquidity in the FX market. But the finance minister, Wale Edu, did say that um, the country will be ex is expecting about $10 billion um, mm -hmm. in a few weeks that would help grease the FX market. But, you know, I, I'm... I'm Tempted to think now at this stage, well, maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse, but I'm thinking, okay, so if the $10 billion comes and then um, we clear the backlog, which many will say is between $7 billion to $10 billion, then what next? Right. So what next is to open the market. That's the only way. Once you have blockades and toll gates, there will always be Precisely. rent collectors. Yeah. We've got to take the risk and just absolutely liberalize the market. Hmm. I know there may, be, there may be some worry that psh, it'll go up, but yeah. eventually it will find its level. That's the only way. Otherwise, what they do says it's going to get 10 billion. All right, so you spend it, the next one comes from where? So that is not a long lasting solution. The long lasting solution is to open it so I can walk into my bank and buy Forex. We should hmm. have Forex shops, like in the UK, mm -hmm. go and buy it. The government has no business controlling the Forex market. It can be a buffer of last resort, yeah. but to manage Forex on a daily basis is unsustainable. Yeah, it has never worked. It's unsustainable. That's the problem. Hmm. So I think they need to review the operational dynamics of Forex. Why should, why should government be a Forex supplier? I don't understand it. Yeah. Why should it be a Forex supplier? You allow the private sector to do it. So you have um, airlines saying, we're not going to come here because uh, we have about $1 trillion and we can't take it out. What is the business of government? You're, doing a, you're a private person. So if you come here to do business, so um, let us say now, what airline can I think of? Say Lufthansa in London. Do they go to the Bank of England? Mm. It's not the business yeah. of the government yeah. to worry yeah. about supplying yeah. forex. It's, it's adequate supply of dollars. You can just go and get that anytime you need it. And so is the silly decision of uh, MFLA to say I ban 43 items. That's trade policy. Nothing to do with uh, monetary policy. Yeah. So my point would be, I need to see a carefully crafted policy around trade, mm. fiscal, and monetary. Mm. Because if you don't align all mm. these three, mm. there's going to be a problem. Mm. The other nonsense about whether the Naira is going to be 2,000. Yeah. What about Japanese yen? What's the, mm. do they worry about the nah, value? No. You should worry about the productive value. Precisely. Even the Chinese don't worry about the yuan. They don't worry. If in I don't fact, want it's it. in their, exactly. It's in their interest if it's weaker. Absolutely. Because it promotes exports. But so, the problem with Nigeria is we don't export it enough. Well, no, because the environment to export is not conducive. It's not conducive. Yeah. That's the reason. 
the environment is not conducive. So those are the big things that I hope you know to see the new, uh, administration, the new administration focus on hmm. the big things. Yeah. Just like when President Roosevelt came in, unemployment he created the uh, Tennessee Valley Authority, put in four million people, you yeah. know, created jobs. Then that slowly begins to build up the economy. Hmm. We are dealing with China that has their 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 productive capacity. So if I'm exporting, I can go to the Chinese um, uh, export bank and I get 50%. Hmm. I had a client who was doing tomato puree. He couldn't sell because the Chinese were bringing it and selling it at, I think, 2,000 naira. Yeah. And his was 5,000. So we need to do all this. We need yeah. to have a robust, yeah. conducive, all-inclusive mm -hmm. trade policy. Mm -hmm. Personally, if I had the opportunity, I'll be raising barriers. Because I can't have an open system where we, we, we have uh, people dumping goods in Nigeria. I would close the place. People say it is anti, uh, what do you call it, WTO. Why did Mr. Trump shut his markets? So we must stop this nonsense of IMF and World Bank telling us what to do. Mm. We need to have our own national endorsed economic policy. Mm. I'm not pleased that every other year uh, Article 4 uh, visits mm -hmm. take place mm -hmm. under the IMF mm -hmm. and they give us prescriptions. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're, not, they're not honest people. Mm. And that's why I want us to turn to the East. Mm. Turn to the East. Even in my law practice, the Eastern lawyers, by which I mean Asia, they are more willing to embrace us. But Western lawyers want to dictate to us. So we need to see a switch. And we need to see somebody that has experienced as um, um, uh, Professor Akinyemi play a strong role in foreign economic policy. Because there's a big gap there. We need, as Kissinger did in the early 70s, to approach the East. That's where we can have a result. Which is why the West is quaking. Because yeah. China is coming. Yeah. So we should take the best out of our relationship with the East and not, and not the West. Yeah. I think the argument that's been made um, in favor of you know, doing away with whatever trade barriers that you have is that if you look at countries that have transited from third world to first world, mm -hmm. they've done that re through trade. Mm -hmm. they've been able to, I mean, they've been able to reduce the um, level of poverty significantly. Sure. So people would then make the argument that, I mean, if it's not broken, why fix it? If there's a model that has worked for other countries, and Nigeria right. is at the point where these countries were in the past, then right. you shouldn't have any barriers to trade because there's research that's been done that shows that when you don't have you know, protectionism policies in place or protectionist mm -hmm. policies in place, mm -hmm. and you have no barriers to trade, then it then impacts directly on the standard of living of people. And then you are able to take more people out of poverty that way. I'm not sure that is right. Hmm. I don't think so. Hmm. So what, what, no, are you suggesting that we should lower our trade barriers? Well, I, I get the point you've made about Nigeria being a dumping ground to a lot of products. I agree. But what I'm saying is that when you have barriers, because if you, the 43 items, yes. I mean, you made the point that that's more of, should be a physical trade policy, really. Not, you shouldn't use monetary policy to fight that. Right. But the thing is, with barriers like that, that stifle trade, Mm -hmm. It just tends to impoverish people even more. I mean, that, that's the argument that I've but heard. But everybody's doing it. The mm. Americans are doing it up to now. Mm. I mean, when I started the cabotage legal regime, which is to make sure that only Nigerian vessels trade in our coastal waters, the economic counselor of the U.S. embassy came to see me and said, what's this all about? I said, well, why did Senator Jones pass the same act I'm pushing here in 1926? Mm. Why did the American Congress refuse... Um, um, the UAE from buying ports in, um, in the US. You can't open your markets. You have to have some sense around how you do business. Yes, I get the point. Uh, so it's not, I'm, I'm not the Minister of Trade, so it's for the Minister of Trade, Minister of uh, Finance, to decide what, to decide best. what yeah. where, where, where best, yeah. so as not to, to stifle line. competition. Precisely but you find a way to draw the line Precisely. so that you protect, you yeah, must protect yeah, your yeah. industry. So you must consider the nuances of Nigeria rather than just take whatever advice you have been given from Absolutely. the West. Absolutely, yeah. and that's I what's happening. Yeah. These multilateral institutions, yeah. I mean, don't help us. Yeah. These, don't forget the institutions, WTO, IMF, World Bank, were all created at the end of the Second World War. 
and these institutions are absolutely in the interest of the West, mm. not us. So I would like, that's why I was so happy with uh, President Tinubu's speech, you know, at the UN, mm. because it was a rally, you know, it was a rally for, for Africa. Yeah. So what I hope he can do, if he stays on, you know, if he stays on, what I hope he can do is to now use what he said to build a really African trade market. I was mm. going to Botswana. This whole act started, it's a mm -hmm. bloody joke. I'm, I was going to Botswana, three days. My daughter has a British passport, one day. And we say we're Africans. So we're pretending, we're hypocrites. We can't move around. And we're talking about African mm. trade. We can't move around, try it. Mm. I mean, one of my lawyers wanted to go to Cameroon. He sat in Togo for almost 10 hours. Mm. So those are the things that African leaders need to come, not Mosteveni who has been there for 40 something years, um, Mr. Whoever, everywhere, yeah. Cameroon. In the last, in the last um, what, 60 years, they've had only two presidents. Come on. Yeah. So there's a lot about democratization that we need if Africa were to grow. And clearly. Nigeria has the capacity hmm. to lead that process. Clearly, clearly. I see your point. So you also said something about um, the need for, for there to be an alignment between fiscal and monetary policy. Yes. You know, I, I think that has been missing for a while, at least in the last eight years, has been missing. Do you have any confidence in the new administration that we would start to see that? You know, we have Wale Edo as the finance minister now. We have Ola Yemi as the central bank governor. Mm. Do you think that, um, you know, perhaps we'll start to see that coordination now? And also bearing in mind that for the, I mean, for the first time since um, we had Okojo Real as finance minister, uh, Mr. Aydin's portfolio is actually coordinating minister for the economy as well, not just finance minister like we had mm. um, Mrs. Mm. Zainab Ahmed. Mm. On the it's too early to tell mm. because these are very, very difficult uh, processes. Mm. Uh, fiscal policy is not as easy as people think because, you see, if you want to get rid of poverty, then you have to spend your way out of it. Yeah. What about inflation? Yeah. Then what so if... Many eh? yeah. So many considerations. So many things. Just like when people say, oh, you look, the interest rate right now is too low. Yes. If you look at inflation, interest rate is well below inflation. In fact, the negative real interest rate in Nigeria is the highest in Africa. So people make the point that, look, you need to increase interest rate, but then if you increase interest rates, it affects your debt service costs. Absolutely. So I, guess, I get the point. So it, uh, it's too early for it's me It's a delicate to, balance. Yeah, delicate balance. Too early. The two guys are my friends. I know them very well. They are bright. I mean, what do they do? In fact, Sort of like I prophesied it mm. on, on one of my shows on TV. Mm. That, you know, I talked about uh, Cardoso and I talked about uh, Chikobi for uh, CBN. Yes, I mentioned them. Um, mm. So they're, they're good guys. Mm. So now, let's. I know that the case in court is distracting. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah. So, it is. and I'm not going to comment on the merits of it, mm. but I think that uh, when that phase is over, we might then begin to see real strategic thinking come out. And I was happy to hear a couple of things at the National Economic Summit uh, group meeting yesterday, which the president attended. So let them just get it together. You know, Nigeria is not a big challenge if you have a plan. Mm. Mm, it's not a big challenge. So, um Part of the reforms that we have seen so far, I mean, you alluded to that much earlier during the course of this interview, the two big ones, the mm -hmm. full subsidy removal and then the FX market liberalization. Mm -hmm. Part of reforms that um, the IMF suggested a while, a while back. So, but if you look at it now, it looks like there's been some sort of um, slowdown or something like That's that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. what are your thoughts? I mean, because... I, Distraction. You know, the government is distracted. You know, but Nigerians are feeling the pinch anyway. What? So it looks like these are half-cooked policies, and then Nigerians are just ordinary Nigerians are bearing the full brunt of it, and so government officials are not even in tune with so that. Captain Tinubu on the aircraft pushes back; it's on the tarmac, is cleared by um, air traffic control to take off. It takes off very well. Headwinds. So that's what's happening now. Turbulence. That's what's happening. Hmm. Turbulence. For me, hmm. the state is Nigeria. Yeah. My loyalty is to the state not to the president. Mm -hmm. So whoever occupies it, I'm loyal to that person yeah. because, it's the, because of yeah. the state. Because of his office. So, yeah. Because of his office. And you know, I just did a little, you know, um, test hmm. with my people at home. They don't care who is the president. They're hungry. Yeah. They're interested. Yeah. So whether it's Tinobu or, yeah. or, or uh, whoever, yeah. they just said, look, I don't want to know. 
I'm hungry. Yeah. I can't pay school fees, medicals. Nigerians are very self-sustaining now. They don't they don't rely on government no, for many things anymore. If there's a big volcano that comes and blows Abuja away, no one will feel it. Yeah. Because the informal sector is keeping Nigeria alive. Precisely. So we just hope that, you know, we can find this um, con this co in, in in airline parlance is called the climb out. Yeah. So the climb out, we're halfway on the climb mm. to to um, what do you call it to cruising. Mm. So when we get to cruising level, mm. then things will look good. Stabilize. The potential of Nigeria having a single digit interest rate is, is very possible. Mm. And I'm happy the fintechs are giving the but regular banks for the money. Yeah. Absolute. Yeah. Absolute. Because whenever I see this maintenance and that and all that mm. on my yeah. account, I'm very yeah. angry. Mm -hmm. So with the competition coming, the banks might start to think through. And I also think, this, this might be controversial, but I think it's time to break up the central bank. Hmm. How do you mean, sir? What does central bank do? Central bank's main function is, is NPR. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's their main function. Yeah. They have no business. Price stability. Oh, mm -hmm. that's Interest rates, inflation, that's all. They have yeah. no business with uh, banks, banking supervision. Of course. Or, Interventions and all those or things. Or financial conduct. So I would say to the Central Bank of Nigeria, look at the UK process. So you have the Bank of England, mm -hmm. you have the Prudential Regulatory Authority. Mm. They deal with banking supervision. Then you have the Financial Conduct Authority. They deal with banking misbehavior. So the Bank of mm. England focuses on NPR. But here, of course, MFLA took us into, you know, yeah. A, a different world. So I like for the central bank to be focused on. Yeah. And having said this, because we're talking about Nigeria being a better, stronger, institution-led place, not only the central bank, um, INEC hmm. needs to be unbundled so that we can get better elections. Because it is this lack of transparency in the electoral process that has put us in this place. Yes. So there's a lot that needs to yeah. be done as we go along. So, sir, so you just shared some very innovative ideas about, you know, why you think the CBN should be unbundled, you know, and then, you know, what you said about INEC as well. So let's let's talk about Nigeria as well. Mm -hmm. Are there other, I mean, in terms of restructuring, isn't there, shouldn't there be some radical changes that should also massive, happen on, massive, on the national massive, level? Massive, massive, massive. Let me take you to the 1st of October, 1860. Hmm. We had about 300 kingdoms. People don't realize that the largest man-made wall in the world was in Nigeria. People think it's China. Benin, the Benin Kingdom, had 10,000 square miles. That is why Oibo people came and stole everything. When I go to the British Museum of History, I want to cry. I see, yeah, they, all of us. they were stolen our yeah. things. They, then they realized that there's a lot of money in this African place, that continent as they mm -hmm. call us, Mongo Park, discovered River Niger. Really, what about my great-grandfather -grand was there? So they now saw the need to amalgamate us. Diverse people. Urobo, Igbo, Yoruba, name it. Forced us together by January 14, 1914. Lord Lugat put us together. Not bad. No. I always believe that bigger is better. Mm -hmm. Problem is that our science is unmanageable. Yeah. I think it was just the amalgamation. It just happened to... It just so, happened for, for commercial to, interest. Yeah. For commercial interest. Yeah. So what our leaders need to do now is to say, you know what? This thing is not working. It's too big. Yeah. Do you think, really think that the chief justice of Nigeria can be chief justice of Nigeria controlling all the cases? Hmm. So I don't know where you're from. Hmm. What town are you from? Ondo State. Ondo. Yeah. So a land matter in Ondo State gets to the Supreme Court. What is the Supreme Court doing with that sort of case? So you need to unbundle the judicature hmm. so that local cases stop in Nondo yes. or my town on each other. Cases that concern all of us will go to the Supreme Court. So we need to, I don't like to use the word restructure because it's offensive to some parts of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And if you want a marriage, there are things that you must do to bring everybody together. But I think the lowest common denominator we can all agree on is that we need to create more space. How can... You remember that uh, uh, this guy who was governor of um, Rivers, Rotimi Amechi, yeah. was actually one-stopped, blocked 
from entering his uh, state house by a commission of police. <laughs> so the truth is that the commission of police is tougher than a governor. That's not good. Yeah. So we need to um, um, unpack, we need to unpack yeah. Nigeria. Mm. And when we unpack Nigeria, look at my friend, uh, Ruto Miyakeleru, he's sitting under one of the world's most, re what's the word now? One of the best bitumen materials in the world. The Benetroff contains sweet oil from Benue right through Onicha, untapped. And I can go on and on. And that's I agree. Because, and that's because you have a, we have what we call a centrifugal federal system mm -hmm. where only one man matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the president. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants the president. Mm -hmm. In the UK, there are four principal regions, Wales, Scotland, England, and Ireland. If you're a QC, like a Masan, you practice, your license is to practice in Wales, not in the UK. But here, as a QC or San, everywhere, <laughs> that's the stop. Hmm. We've, got to, we've, got to, we've, we've got to look at River Niger. More autonomy to look states. at River Niger. That's my river. It's, co it's controlled from Abuja. Well, what has the Abuja man yeah. got to do with my, the river in my yeah. town? The other day I saw some lowly person from the Ministry of Aviation with the governor in Oweri inspecting the airport. What does what is the federal government's business doing all that with an airport in Oweri? I, I see the point. I mean, yes, a lot of a lot of us have been advocating for you know that kind of state autonomy, because without that, the current structure we have, I think it has made a lot of states lazy. Too I mean, lazy. Look at data like foreign direct investment inflows into states, and then you see that as many as 27 states seem to attract a single dollar Absolutely. throughout last year yeah. in FDI. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, well, yeah, they, yeah. There's, no, there's no incentive to do that because yeah. you can just go and, you know, to Abuja, to yeah, to get fact, yeah, and, and, you know. So, but if you had that sort of autonomy, then and you know that, oh, the, the future of the states is in their own hands, yeah. perhaps we would start to see yeah. more innovation from yeah. them. Absolutely. And le leadership is also something we need to, you know, look at. And I, for this, I applaud Wiki. Hmm. He just came to Abuja and everybody's on the run. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. Yeah. Is, that shows you the meaning of effective leadership. Mm. Gonna, you guys don't pay tax. Mm. Shaking a lot of tables. Shaking everything up. All <laughs> the dens of thieves and robbers have disappeared. So if we were to walk on one of the streets of Abuja, he's going to have about 5,000 people following him. Mm. Because he's popular. Yeah. Because he's taking popular decisions. Mm. Any president that cannot walk on the streets mm. does not deserve to be mm. Nigerian president. Mm. But do you think the president... Okay, go on, sir. Is it, no, no. I was going to ask that. Do you think the president can single-handedly make these radical changes that you're speaking about? The initiative for the achievement of good governance mm. comes from... The top. The president. Yeah. But he needs people. But if he delegates it, there's a problem, which is why I'm a bit concerned mm. about Wale Edu being coordinated minister. Does that make him sound like a prime minister? That's a sort of delegation. Mm -hmm. President Biden is in front. All the British prime ministers, you see uh, Rishi Shunak, absolutely in front. He, he wouldn't say coordinated minister of the state. You handle this. So that one I'm not sure of. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, whatever model, what is important is leadership. Because President Tinubu has demonstrated a particular style. So maybe it works for him. It worked for him in Lagos. So if he understands how to rally people, put somebody in front, it works. Look, what Nigerians want is just good life, dividends of democracy, yeah. Yeah. food in the stomach, yeah. medical facilities, yeah. good roads. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Nothing more. Yeah. So I, I, do, I do hope that, um, because I'm tired, I tell you. Many people are. Are you? Are oh, you, of course I am. You're not as tired as I am. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't be. I've been in this stuff hmm. for 40 years. Hmm. So, and this is my final 10 years, because hmm. I'm 70, hmm. and I'm going to 80. Hmm. So if, if, when I started, the whole thing was fighting the military, we spent our first 20 years getting beaten, our passports taken, throwing us to different prisons, Enugu here and there, Ghani, the late uh, um, uh, the doctor, Beko, mm. uh, Femi Falano. So we, we've said to ourselves, this is the best opportunity. 
to see someone who will be in office that we can assist to cross the Rubicon yes. and get Nigeria on sound foot. Yes. I agree with you, sir, because I, I think as time, I mean, with, if you look at things today, I, I feel like we have even less room to continue the way we have, I mean, that we have in the past. Because by 2050, for instance, I mean, we'll be home to 400 million people, yeah, third yeah. largest country in the world. Yeah. So it's now or never, really. But I don't know if that message has gotten home to, the, to our leaders. It, it hasn't. Now or never. No, it hasn't. Really. I mean, how has it gotten home to our leaders if in, in, in the midst of poverty, uh, that the priorities to buy Prado cards. <laughs> so there's, there's a problem. Think of Nigerians as your children. Mm. So if you see your child sitting at home, not going to school, you will be disturbed of or not eating. Of course. So that's what I think a Nigerian president should be doing for Nigerians. Mm. And Nigerians are very good people, you know. Yes, we are. Very good people. Otherwise, our streets would have been full with protests here and there. Protests. Yeah. Full, 10 million, 20 million people on the streets. Because yeah. when I come to Ababa from Ikoi, I see them. I see vagabonds, or hungry. Yeah. How can a man at seven, eight be drunk on Ogoro? Mm. Because he has nothing to do. He doesn't care. And that's a common general problem. It is. So we really need to hope for the best for our country. Mm. That's an important message. Yeah. I think we can end the conversation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's it on today's episode. That was packed. Do visit our website at www.businessday.ng and don't forget to follow us across our multiple social media platforms. My name is Lola Day and this is the Business Day exclusive. Till next time, thank you.